Hello, everyone. Welcome to Practical GCP. So you may have seen my video from last week regarding the uh, the pop up message consuming on GKE Autopilot, where I kind of showcase how to actually deploy a consumer use case for pop up into it. But one of the key things uh, I've mentioned was when you try to scale with the auto scaler uh, based on cloud monitoring metrics, the scaling, because you can't control the amount of nodes you have uh, on the cluster while the nodes themselves. So it's not the scaling wasn't actually instant. It actually took uh, quite a few minutes from my experience for the, the actual pods to scale up uh, in order to, you know, matching up to the traffic to scale up to the traffic. Um, so I've actually been doing some very interesting reading. And in this session today, I would like to show you how to actually scale the GK Autopilot cluster in seconds using some uh, technique using um, this thing called the, the balloon pods. So first of all, I'll explain what the balloon pods is and where I actually read from it. And then I'll show you how do I actually scale the same use case, which is the pops up consumer use case in seconds instead of minutes. Uh, and also to kind of talk a little bit about the cost implications because this isn't really come from for free. So it's something you kind of have to manage as part of this uh, using this approach. So first of all, a bit about the uh, belong um, pods. So I read the how to kind of do this with the autopilot cluster in this article from William Dennis. Uh, I actually did a bit of reading about this guy. He's actually from Google and he's a product manager on the Kubernetes and GKE team. Um, so, you know, you got the title of product manager, but don't actually underestimate, underestimate these guys' capabilities of technical hands-on capability. They are actually really, really good on this kind of stuff as well. Um, so this article, I really recommend you read this in full, uh, but in, in this video, I'll show you a few number, a few points uh, where you want to, want to focus on. Um, so first of all, the, so this is all about how to use balloon pods, right? So just talk a little about what this thing is. So, so William started discussing or describing the issue that uh, where just the, you know, the issue I've been facing last week as well was, it typically says the provisioning the new capacity to scale up to match the new workload is taking 60 to 80 seconds, right? That's like a, just over a minute. For me, it was a little bit longer. Um, so I think this really kind of depends on uh, down your workload. And when the auto scaler kind of got, got triggered, um, so this is kind of the you know the diagram what typically happens. You you don't really have any spare capacities, especially on autopilot. You can't use easy even easily over provision your number of nodes behind the scenes, right? Because you don't get to manage the nodes. You only manage the pod via CPU and RAM, and uh, a number of, number of replicas. So in this scenario, what happens is it takes ages for the nodes to spin up when you don't have reserve capacity. But what happens is you can actually do this thing called a balloon pod. So in a nutshell, what it means is basically some kind of pods you deploy that does absolutely nothing. It just kind of sleeps in there uh, indefinitely, right? It doesn't actually do anything, but it serves in there as kind of spare capacity for any kind of workload you have in the cluster. So in, in this case, you can see that some of these balloon pods gets deployed, right? As you, you have a number of these, and you basically leave them there for nothing. The way this works, this is where it gets really interesting. So first of all, what you need to do is to deploy this thing called a priority class. So you deploy this priority class that is going to be assigned to the balloon pods. And this will have a very like low priority. Um, obviously there's some thing he mentioned about the undocumented one, the minus 10 is the bare minimum you wanna use. Otherwise it's not gonna, uh, it's gonna trigger the upscale. So this is the, the balloon Pod priority you're going to be assigning to the balloon pods. Uh, you probably guess kind of why you want something to be really low priority because later on, what happens is when you deploy this, these things don't actually do anything. Uh, as you can see in the deployment, you've got the uh, a few things interesting here. So priority class, this is the one we just created to use the balloon priority, which is minus 10. And then you deploy this to absolutely do nothing. So all it does is to create a container and then sleep forever, right? And this is where it gets useful is where you actually request the number of uh, a CPU and RAM, but this is per pod that you need. And at the very top, you specify how many do you need, right? So this is the kind of the sizing you want the balloon, the, the backup priority uh, in this particular case to 
you know, gets used in, in, your, in your workload when it's required. So the way this stuff works is because this is ultra low priority, and it also has a grace period for termination of that zero second. What this means is when you, your workload kicks in, right, all of these are going to be evicted immediately to, you know, to, to swap these over to kind of as a replacement to so all of your workload has a higher priority that you deploy would end up taking over the resources from this one, right? So this is how the balloon pause works in, in, in a nutshell. So I think that's pretty much about it, right? So the, the, I think that one of the, the, the things to, other things to watch out is, uh, is you don't want these, these pods to be too small. Uh, so uh, the recommendation here from William is you use at least the biggest sized uh, pod you've got in your workload. So if your workload needs uh, 200 M of CPU, which is a quarter, uh, which is a fifth of the one CPU, right? And 250 megabytes of RAM. So you, you, your this is the reserve capacity. So your your biggest pod would be kind of this size, right? The real workload you want to use would be 200 RAM. So you can make this a little bit bigger, or but it won't. It shouldn't be smaller because if it's smaller, obviously it won't be able to use those resources, right? If you need like a 500 or something, then it won't be able to use it. So in this case, you've got 10 here in the bag, uh, and now you deployed each of those with 200 M. Okay, so let's have a look at the this in action, how it actually works. So what I've done is um, same as the last one, I've created a topic, right, with a subscription. And this is, yeah, not currently you can see there's no traffic, right? And if you go back to the workload, uh, same thing again, I've got this Kubernetes autopilot cluster. Uh, I've deployed the custom metric stack driver uh, adapter, which is used to serve the, the metrics like polar. So it actually you know, knows how many messages in the queue uh, and that hasn't been consumed, which can then be consumed by this, uh, this, this thing. So you can see this got an auto scaler at the very bottom here as well. Currently it's, uh, I've allowed it to go from one to five, right? In this particular case. Um, and what you've also noticed here, this is new from uh, from last session. I've got 10 pods, exactly same as what's in William's article. I've got 10 of these pods basically sleeping right now, doing nothing. And then uh, they've been created just like a couple hours ago, a couple of hours ago. So this, you can see they're all running, right? They're not actually doing anything, but they're all running. Um, there are 10 of them. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'll show you uh, what happens when the auto scaling is triggered. So in order to do this, I need to get some traffic into the message queue, right? I'm going to, I've got a script. I'm not going to show you, but uh, I'm running it right now to send a um, hundred thousand messages into the message queue. Right, that's sending right now as we talk, as we speak. But you can see, right, in this case, if you saw the video from last week, so the auto scaling can see this has been triggered, right? So this, you know, it's like, as soon as it came to the page, there wasn't anything like, oh, there's no resources. It takes a while to scale up or anything. It just did it, right? All five pods is instantly kind of scaled up. So it does take a bit of time for this auto scaler to realize uh, using this particular method on checking number of messages uh, in average is outstanding in the queue. Uh, but as soon as that happened, the uh, there's no more waiting on scaling up on the pod itself. So this is almost instant. I think it took around, uh, as soon as the auto scaler kick, could kick in, it took about five to 10 seconds for this to, to have, be at full capacity. So you can see in here, so now the messages is ramped up to 100,000 and then it will start processing using five pods instead of one. So the, the balloon pods, right? So the, these are usually when the first time is you're creating, because I've tried this earlier myself. Uh, so it actually has some spare capacity behind the scenes as well. So when I tried this earlier myself, when I just created this cluster with this 10 balloon pods, what happened is when I uh, when I have the other side scaled up, like here, scaled up, 
the Bulumpa suddenly went into eviction, which is the expected uh, expected uh, capacity, right? So it will it will go down to something like because I had five on the other side, which is four more. This will have four evicted. So in this case, it didn't because uh, uh, I actually scaled it up, and then, so this actually went to pending. So it was requesting additional capacity while the it was taken by the the consumer workload. So it always has a pool that reserved for you for this extra capacity. So now I've just done a deployment to allow the maximum replica to be 15 in the auto scaler. So now you can see that you see this 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 scaling was again instant, right? It was uh, it was scaling up to so this is I think this is like 10 now. And this this is like second page, right? You, you've got 15 straight away. And uh, now, right, this is where it gets interesting. You look at the the balloon pods, four are unschedulable. So basically, what I'm trying to do here is to exhaust this uh, reserved capacity from the balloon pods. So then, just to show you, you know, this stuff kicks in. So, but every time when it kicks in, this unschedulable ones uh, behind the scenes, it goes into pending. So after a while, it will re request the resources, the additional resources to be your backup again, like for any kind of other workload. But this takes time, right? You can see this is unschedulable. It takes quite a while for this to get filled up. But the key thing is, is it's taken all of the uh, required resources needs from the balloon pulse and it's scaled up to 15 nodes, right? 15 pulse. Actually, I had an issue with the uh, the code. So there was erroring out uh, behind the scenes. So that's why it was uh, uh, not showing the message being consumed because it has never been acknowledged. But you can see like with 15 pulse, it actually went down straight away, right? That's, that's down to zero. Uh, one also very interesting thing is uh, you can see that uh, this uh, balloon deployment. So earlier we had some four uh, unschedulable pods, right? So now you can see it's been filled in and then kind of in the background listening again uh, as your extra reserve capacity. So this is this is like a very good thing to 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 know. Um, I think uh, just to add a little bit of co about the cost implications as well. So obviously. You know, th these are normal deployments, right? It's very different to Cloud Run. So Cloud Run, obviously, you just pay for, you don't actually manage uh, any kind of pods. You just kind of pay for based on traffic scaling, right? And then and it goes up and down. You don't have to deal with this, this level of uh, granularity. So in this particular case, because you've asked to deploy uh, 10 spare capacity, like in the, in the shape of pods, right? So then these you have to pay for these 10 in the background. and but, it's, but that's about it, right? And then if you actually start using those, let's say when this scales down in a bit, when the autoscaler realizes it doesn't need uh, that much traffic, it will. It usually takes a, a few minutes before, because if you get another spike, it doesn't make sense to keep scaling up and down all the time. So after a while, it's, this is going to scale down as well. So you only pay for what you use at pod level in this particular case. Um, but this is sort of like a really important thing that you just know, okay, you always have those 10 uh, uh, spare capacity in, in your workload. And the interesting thing here as well is that these 10 like reserved capacity, reserved pods are not just for one workload, right? In the GK cluster, you have different namespaces. You can see I've got three namespaces here. This is in the default namespace. I've got other namespace for specific services. So you could deploy 10, 20, 30 different services in different areas. So those 10 are shared, um, which is reserved for all of it, right? So whichever one that require these resources, it will, because this is the lowest priority. So it will kind of give you the resources uh, boost in these other areas uh, immediately. So like I said earlier, this is kind of taking seconds to scale up instead of minutes uh, compared to, you know, if you don't actually do this kind of things. Uh, especially in the GK auto cl uh, autopilot cluster, you, you can't even over provision, right? This is kind of the, uh, in my opinion, the GKE autopilot cluster way of over provisioning. Uh, but it's actually quite nice in a way that you don't actually have to manage any nodes. You just say, I'm going to throw the backup reserves, which are like 10, 20 pods in this kind of CPU or RAM capacity, right? So whenever these other ones require them, uh, it will just kick in immediately to serve the request. And this one in the background, would fill it up uh, over time, uh, which isn't you know which isn't uh, something you require to be immediate because this 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 has been taken away by the other services. Okay, 
Finally, there's a few other things I want to mention. So this repository is the what I've showed you in the last one. I made some improvements uh, specifically on because last one, last time I was kind of mixing up a little bit on the um, where the the bindings been created uh, for the IAM part and where the service counts been created on on that. So I've kind of split up this a little bit, so a, a little bit cleaner. I've also add the uh, the balloon pods uh, linked back to William's article in here as well. Uh, with uh, and more of these things has been uh, been put into the deployment folder, so you don't have to go to all of these other places uh, to look them up. Um, yeah, so uh, if you look at the, the previous session, you would notice that in the metric adapter uh, mentioned, uh, you have to maybe redeploy it to get it working. So the issue was actually the order of uh, uh, creating the bindings. So I've added these uh, these this this section here, uh, which is to create the binding between the the Kubernetes service account and the uh, IAM service account, right? So this is actually required. So when you uh, when you put this in the the Kubernetes instructions, uh, when you actually create a native service and doing the deployment, uh, it all does it once. Otherwise, it's going to be uh, having the problem out of outer issue. So yeah, just a little bit about uh, this repository updates. Um, and again, like this this guy's stuff is really uh, interesting. So obviously, I only accidentally came across it on the balloon deployment. But if you look at this stuff, you've also got the HPA, which I also talked about in the previous one, and also how to deploy the, you know, the external metrics in GCP. So, yeah, so I think um, if, if you're interested in Kubernetes, and I don't think this, this is just about autopilot, there's all sorts of sections about Kubernetes. Um, yeah, and, and if you look at like chapter four, it also talks about like this readiness, liveliness, uh, health checks and rolling updates. So. Yeah, I think this, I'm certainly going to be enjoy reading this stuff. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, that's pretty much about it. Yeah. Thanks very much for listening. And this is the end of the session. I'll see you next time. Go, go, go.